Everything in progress. A great night to one and all. Welcome to this March 2024 Licensure Examination for Teachers Review for Mathematics Majors. I am Mr. Kim J.C. Ensho, and I will be your reviewer for tonight. And I will be discussing with you the pre-board examination set three. So I have prepared here another set of 24 items and some extra problems also later on. So I hope that the copies of the tests is with you. You are able to have a copy of your answers as well. And hopefully, as we discuss the answers, we will also gain insights on how to solve some problems that might be difficult for us and hopefully help you prepare for the licensure examination for teachers. So, so here is our direction. So shade the letter of the correct answer. If the correct answer is not found among the choices, we have to shade E. So are you ready? I believe. Let's go. Let's do this. All right. Okay, number one. There are two positive numbers whose arithmetic, geometric, and harmonic means are contained in the set 8, 10, and 6.4, but not in order. Which of the following is the harmonic mean? Is it 6.4? Is it 8? Or is it 10? Or maybe is it incomplete information? Okay, according to the people who commented, there are many of you so far. Your answer is letter A, and you believe that 6.4 is the correct answer. Mm -hmm. Tama nga kaya si 6.4. Because in this case, we don't know what the numbers are, but is it really 6.4? And take note, meron po kasi tayong uh, inequality. No? So given any two positive quantities, AM, we have the AM, GM, and HM inequality. AM stands for the arithmetic mean. GM stands for the geometric mean. And the HM stands for the harmonic mean. And this theorem states that the arithmetic mean is greater than or equal to the geometric mean. And the geometric mean is greater than or equal to the harmonic mean. With such... Since harmonic mean yung lowest among the three, and in the choices, and in among the options 8, 10, and 6.4, 6.4 is the lowest of them. So it follows, therefore, that 6.4 or letter A is the harmonic mean. It also follows that 10 is the arithmetic mean, and the GM here, or the geometric mean, is 8. Okay, so good start for those who answered letter A. Number two, the number 14 is a blank number. Is it abundant, deficient, perfect, or triangular? What do you think po? Sabi ni Teacher Marnie, ni Teacher Alisa, letter B daw, which is deficient. Sabi ni Ma'am Jackie Lu, ni Ma'am Alisa as well. Okay. Ni Ma'am Teya din, no? from straight from Camarines Sur. And Ma'am, sabi ni Ma'am Dayan, ni Ma'am Jessica, deficient daw. Tama nga kaya. Now, let's note what are the positive factors of 14 maliban sa sarili nito. Ano yung mga positive factors ni 14 except itself? So when we say factors, no, these are the numbers that you multiply that you could possibly multiply to get the particular answer. And I agree with Ma'am Jackie Lu. These are 1, 2, and 7. Tama po. Hindi ko po sinali si 14 kasi sabi niya, except itself. Now, i-add po natin yung mga positive factors ni 14. Maliban sa sarili niya. So these are what we call proper factors din po. No? So 1 plus 2 plus 7 is equal to 10. And you could see po na ang sum po ng mga proper fact, positive factors ng 14, ang sum niya na 10, ay mas maliit compared to the given number which is 14. Thus, 
Kung yung sum po ng mga proper factors ay less than the given number, ang tawag po sa number na yan ay deficient number. Letter P. Kung nag-equal naman po, ang tawag sa number na yan ay perfect number. Pero kapag sumobra po yung sum ng mga positive uh, ng mga proper factors kaysa sa number itself, ang tawag ko sa number na yan ay abundant number. So dito po, mas mali maliit po, mas maliit po yung sum ng proper factors kung iko-compare po natin sa actual number. Kaya letter B po, deficient number. Okay. I hope na kuha po natin. What is the largest number or what is the largest power of 3 that divides 20 factorial? 20 factorial means 20 times 19 times 18 times 17 all the way until 3 times 2 times 1. It's like it is, in fact, the product of all natural numbers from 1 until 20. Is it A, 7, B, 8, C, 9? Or D, 10. What do you think? Letter D daw. 10. Sabi ni ma'am. How about the others? D rin. Sabi ni ma'am Jessica. Okay. Tama nga kaya? We'll see. Now, dito po, no, meron po kasi tayong theorem, no? That in this case, by the way, 3 raised to k divides 20 factorial. So ano yung pinakamalaking value ng k na yan? So meron po tayong theorem, no? So if you will divide 20 by powers of 3, like 3 raised to 1, 3 raised to 2, 3 raised to 3, 3 raised to 4, and get their summation, then, uh, and by the way, no, you will get also what we call the greatest integer function of each. So when we say greatest integer function, it is the integer, it is the largest integer that is less than or equal to the given integer po. So dito, 30, let's call this k, no? 20 over 3, diba 3 raised to 1 is 3, okay? 3 squared is 9, 3 cubed is 27, uh, 3 to the 4th is 81, and actually you could continue this pattern po, no? Until raised, 3 raised to 5 and so on. Now, if you will express them naman po in decimal form, so yung 20 thirds will become 6.6666 and so on, uh, yung 20 over 9 will be 2.6666 and so on, Yung 20 over 27 will be 0. 0.740, blah, 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 and so on. Yung 20 over 81 will be 0. 0.24 something and so on. So, um, yan po. So, ano po? Tingnan nyo po yung 6.6. .6. Ano po yung greatest integer function nito? Nang 6.6666666 and so on. Ang greatest integer function niya, di ba? Is the integer... It's the integer that is less than or equal to the given number. So it or, or to make the long story short na lang po, drop na, na lang po yung decimal part and just copy the whole number part. So dito, 6. Dito, 2. Dito, 0, 0, 0. Lahat na yan na napapunta sa plus dot dot dot, puro na 0 lahat yan. Kaya hindi ko na po siya pinagpatuloy. Kaya, just 6 plus 2 plus 0 plus 0 and so on, plus 0 and so on, that's 8. So I'm sure po that the largest power of 3 that divides 20 factorial is 8. Or we could say that 3 raised to 8 divides 20 factorial in this case. Letter P. 8 po. So kung lalagpas na sa, sa 8 ang value ng K, halimbawa, if K is 9, um, I believe, no, hindi, I-try nyo pong divide sa calculator nyo. Um, magiging decimal na po yung sagot. Hindi na po siya whole number. Okay? So letter B po ang ating tamang sagot. 
number four. I hope na nakuha ko natin. <laughs> Sana all. Number four. What is the sum of all positive factors of 480? Is it 1,890? 1,980? 1,990? Or 2,010? What do you think po? For number four. Anong sum ng lahat ng positive factors ng 480? Okay, wala raw tamang sagot, sabi ng classmate niyo. Okay, wala raw tamang sagot. How about the others po? Letter E rin daw. Okay, check natin kung tama. So may technique po dito. And the technique here is to express um the number in its prime factorization form in exponential form no so 48 you could verify po with your calculator that 480 is equal to 2 raised to 5 times 3 times 5 ang next na gagawin po ninyo is ito po so the kunin niyo po yung sum ng lahat ng positive factors ng baw take note po ha need po na dapat prime number yung base nila Kung hindi po prime number ang base, nako, hindi po ninyo pwedeng gawin yung technique na to. Dapat prime number po yan. So, get the sum first of all, the prime of all the factors, I mean, of two raised to, of each of this. So, the sum of all factors of 2 raised to 5 is 2 raised to 0 or 1, plus 2 raised to 1, plus 2 squared, plus 2 cubed, plus 2 to the 4th, plus 2 to the 5th. Yung 3 naman, it's 1, plus 3 raised to 1. This is 3 raised to 0 or 1 plus 3 raised to 1 or 3. Ito naman po, yung 5. This is 5 raised to 0 plus 5 raised to 1. And from here, no, just using your calculator, this becomes 63 times 5. Uh, sorry po. So you have 63 times 4 times 6, which is actually 1,512. And that's what you could see po, 1,512 is not among the choices. So the correct answer here is letter E. Congratulations. So I think there are many, some of you know, who got letter E. And thank you po, Ma'am Teya, for the uh, solutions. Number five. How many natural numbers below 30 are relatively prime to 30? Is it 5, 7, 8, or 9? Kapag sinabi po natin relatively prime, dapat uh, relative, relatively prime with 30 or to 30, meaning ang GCF ng number na yan, with 30, dapat 1. Halimbawa, 7. 7 is relatively prime with 30 because the GCF of 7 and 30 is 1. However, 9 is not relatively prime with 30 because ang GCF ng 9 at saka 30 ay 3. So ilan kaya? Okay, may sumagot ng letter B. Check po natin. So if you have 30, no, uh, the technique here is get prime factorization first. And from here, the next thing that you have to do is use this function, your phi of n, which is equal to n times 1 minus 1 over p sub 1, times 1 minus 1 over p sub 2, all the way until 1 minus 1 over p sub r, where p sub 1, p sub 2, p sub r, and so on, are the unique prime factors. Samantalang si n naman po yung number na yan. So here, n here is 30, p sub 1 is 2, the p sub 2 is 3, and the last prime is 5. Take note, ha? you can use this formula regardless po kung ano man yung exponent ng prime number. So by substitution, that's phi of 30 equals 30 times 1 minus 1 half, kasi ito, no? 1 over 2, times 1 minus 1 over 3, times 1 minus 1 over 5. And using your calculators, it's 30 
times one half times two thirds times four fifths, it's actually eight. Letter C. Those numbers are actually one, seven, 11, 13, 17, 19, 23, and 29. If you will take their GCF of these numbers with respect to 30, GCF nila ay magiging 1 po. That's why letter C ang tamang sagot. I hope na nakuha po natin. And tama man tayo o mali, okay lang po. Yung mahalaga po nag-try tayo. I hope it's clear. Number 6. Suppose the digits of 13,458 are rearranged to form five-digit numbers. Among all the possible numbers, how many of them are divisible by three? Is it 120, 60, 48, or 24? Please comment your answer po. Okay, some of you answered letter A. 120 raw. Check po natin. So, take note po ha, it's actually a divisibility rule, no? One of the shortcuts po natin to determine if a number, if a natural number is divisible by 3, if the sum of its digits is divisible by 3. Okay? So, in this case, kung inyo po mapapansin yung digits ng 13,458, 1, plus 3, plus 4, plus 5, plus 8, ay 21. In other words, 13,458 is actually divisible by 3 dahil 20, the sum of the digits niya ay divisible by 3. And take note po, wala pong 0 na digit dito. And any digit could be uh, placed anywhere. no? And kahit saan mo po ilagay yung digit na yan, the sum of all the digits will still be 21. So therefore, any arrangement of these five distinct digits will always be divisible by 3. And since 21 is divisible by 3, thus 13,458 is divisible by 3. Since no digit is 0, then the total number of five-digit numbers out of the arrangement is 5 factorial lang po. Bakit 5 factorial? Kasi meron kang 5 digits and you will use them without repetition. So that's 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. Thank you po, Sir Melvin. Uh, from Isabella, that's 120. Thus, there are 120 numbers that are divisible by 3 out of using all the digits of 13,458. Letter A. So kapag may zero po sa harap, so dito, kung may zero naman po, sa pinakaharap mo, apat lang. Four times five. Uh, four. Uh, again po, kung, uh, kung meron pong zero, so four lang dito sa harap, tapos may apat ka pang natitira. So four times four times three times two times one. Ang labas niya, four times four times three times two times one which is 24 times 4 or 96. I hope na clear po sa atin. Number 7. So in this case, you can use the um, fundamental counting principle pa rin po. Number 7. What is the mean of a binomial experiment that occurs with probability of success of 0.76 and is repeated 150 times. Is it A, 108, B, 100.5, C, 114, or D, 115? What do you think, Pop? Let her see now. Mm -hmm. What others? What do others think? Po? Let her see it in doubt. Are we convinced of letter C? Let's see. So take note po ha. To get the mean na lang po, just multiply the success rate with the total number of outcomes. 
That's why it's just simply 0. 0.76 times 150, and that's 140. So I agree po. Letter C. Congratulations, Ma'am Jackie Lu, Ma'am Thea, Ma'am Dayan. Okay. And to the rest as well, no? nakakuha rin po ng tamang sagot. So multiply nyo lang po ha, yung success times the total number of outcomes. And that is how you get the mean or yung average nila. Number eight. How many statistical errors are there in all? Is it one, two, three, or four? Ilan po sila? How many statistical errors are there? Especially no, in making decisions. Letter B daw, sabi ni Ma'am Jackie Lu. Ganun din ata ang sabi ni Ma'am Alessa, ni Ma'am Dayan, ni Ma'am is Sir Melvin as well, no? Tama nga kaya ang B. And if you answered B, sabi ni Ma'am Thea, ganun din. And if you answered B, you have to be happy because you are actually correct. In statistical, uh, ano no, in making decisions, um, for example, in either rejecting or not your null hypothesis, you can use, you, you can commit actually what we call type 1 or type 2 errors. Type 1 error is also called alpha error. And type 1 error happens when uh, the null hypothesis is true, but you rejected it. Again, type 1 error happens when you rejected a true null hypothesis. Samantala, yung type 2 error naman po happens when you know that the null hypothesis is false, pero hindi mo siya nireject. Yung, so yung hugot dito is simple lang. Yung type 1 error po, alam mong tama. Bakit nireject mo? Yung type 2 naman, alam mong mali. Bakit hindi mo nireject? So letter B, two errors lang po tayo. <laughs> okay, humugot pa more. Number 9. Which of the following statements is true? Uh, statement 1. If type 1 error increases, then type 2 error increases. 2. If type 1 error decreases, then type 2 error decreases. Part 3. Uh, number 3. If type 1 error increases, then type 2 error decreases. And number 4. If type 1 error decreases, then type 2 error increases. Is it A, 1 and 2, B, 3 and 4, C, 1 and 3, or D? Two and four. Anyone? Ok, sabi ni ma'am, chatilo daw, letter B. May nagsagot naman po, no? Nang letter D. May sumagot ng B rin as well. Sabi ni ma'am, chatilo, inversely proportional daw sila. May sumagot naman ng letter C. Okay, sino kaya ang tama? Or meron kayang nakakuha ng tamang sagot? And, dan 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 Letter P po ang tamang sagot. Let me explain. I do agree, no, with uh, with Ma'am Jackie Lu. So take note po natin, ha? Magkabaliktad po yung type 1 error at saka yung type 2 error. Kapag Yung isa tumaas, yung isa bababa. Or yung isa bumaba, yung isa tataas. Baliktad po yung kanilang direction. Hence, the correct answer po is number numbers 3 and 4. If type 1 error increases, then type 2 error decreases. And if type 1 error decreases, then type 2 error must increase as well. So take note po ha. They don't go together. They are inversely proportional po. They are inversely related. Letter B. Okay. Number 10. Consider a normal distribution with a mean of 7. What percent of the data set is higher than 7? Is it A, 25, B, 30, C, 45, or D, 50? What do you think?
Okay, many of you answered letter D, which is 50%. And if you answered D, D, wow. Very good. You are actually correct. Bakit po? Because in a normal distribution, the mean, the median, and the mode are all equal. And they are located at the center of the distribution. Also, it is a known fact po, no, or assumption also, in uh, your normal distribution, that half or 50% of the data is below the mean, and the other half is above the mean. Hence, since 7 po is your mean, then 50% is higher than the mean, which is 7. Letter G. Good job. Ay, okay, thank you po. Nakanoy seduction po tayo for today's video. 11. In a class about quadratic functions, the teacher showed the following graph to students. Some learners mentioned the following. Who among them is incorrect. Take a look po, ah. so that's a quadratic function. Okay, letter A, sabi niya, the function has a minimum point. Tama po ba siya? Tama po ba siya o mali? The function has a minimum point and that person is actually correct. Tandaan po natin, since the quadratic equation is opening upward, then the vertex is the lowest point or the minimum point. So A is actually correct. How about ang B? The leading coefficient is positive. Tama ba? It is also correct. Tama po. Because tandaan po natin that, uh, that um, a quadratic function in standard form will only open upwards if the leading coefficient is positive. The range is y is less than or equal to negative 5. Ito po ay mali. Bakit? The range is y is greater than or equal to 5. Bakit greater than or equal to 5? Ang lowest y dito ay five, negative 5. And yung lahat ng y's na parte ng graph ay mas mata ay mataas na. No? Mas mataas kung iahamping sa negative 5. So it's starting from negative 5 to infinity. So C is wrong. And letter D, the graph is symmetrical about the vertex. It is actually correct. Because quadratic functions are all uh, are always symmetrical with respect to the uh, vertex. No? Or let's say about your axis of symmetry also. So letter C. Okay. Good job. Number 12. Mathematics teaching and learning included the use of authentic assessment, including ICT literacy. On what philosophy is authentic assessment anchored? Schools must help students A. Become proficient at performing tasks they encounter when they graduate. B. Master knowledge and skills. C. Pass test on knowledge and skills acquired, or D, acquire written and communication skills. Which is the best reason for number for authentic assessment? Letter A daw, sabi ni Sir Melvin. How about the others? Authentic assessment. Okay, so many of you now answered letter A, and if you answered letter A, you are actually correct. So because of when we speak about authenticity of our assessment, so it should be something that's close to real life that would enable them to function well or to perform their duties properly in accordance also no, to what the society expects of them. So letter A po. Galeg. Okay, nangangalahati na po tayo. Let's proceed to number 13. A teacher uses a video presentation to deliver her lesson. Why is it necessary to stop the video from time to time? A, to entertain questions. B, to provide explanation. C, to disrupt attention. Or D, choices A and B are correct. Okay. 
Okay, letter D daw. Ang sagot ng madlang people. And if you answer D, ang sagot ng madlang people, mabuhay. You are actually correct po. Because it's necessary, no? Because from time to time, we have to stop the video because sometimes we don't really need to assume that na alam na ng hat ng students yung questions. There are some instances where in may mga tanong sila that you need to stop and entertain questions. Because if you allow the video to continue without addressing questions, sometimes um, they they might not be really ready no? or ready to grasp or to understand further what the video is saying without entertaining or clarifying their questions. And of course, you need also to provide explanation to certain topics that need to be emphasized. So we go with letter B. Go po, teacher Mitch, kaya po yan. Push natin to. 14. Take a look at this triangle po. What is tangent to A? Is it 5, 6? 119 over 120. Is it 120 over 119? Or 13 over 12? Tangent to A. Okay? Letter C down. Push lang po, Ma'am Mage. Kaya po yan. Okay, letter B daw. May sumagot ng C, may sumagot ng B, may sumagot naman ng A. Uh, for today ata, parang iba-iba po ating, yung ating sagot no? sa item na to. So, tangent to A. So, take note po uh, that in this case, tangent A is equal to 5 over 12. Kasi if this is your acute angle A in this right triangle, no? um, tangent is defined as opposite over adjacent. So that's why opposite ng A is 5, adjacent ng A is 12. We don't include 13 because 13 is the hypotenuse po. Now, um, meron po tayong formula na that tangent to A is actually equal to 2 tangent A all over 1 minus tangent squared A. I hope that you could still recall no this double angle identity. And by substitution po, when we say tangent squared A, yung value ng tangent A ay isi-square mo lang naman. Okay? So by substitution, tangent 2A is equal to 2 times 5 twelfths all over 1 minus uh, tangent A, which is 5 twelfths quantity uh, squared. And dahil dyan, um by simplifying po, no, using our calculators, tangent to A is 120 all over 119. So with that, so to those who answered C, you got it right po. And hoping na may natutunan po tayo sa item na ito. I hope na okay po sa atin. And if you wish, feel free po to visit um, some more lessons no, in uh, YouTube, for example, especially on double angle and half-angle identities as well. 15. In what quadrant will theta terminate if tangent theta is positive and secant theta is negative? Is it A, quadrant 4, B, quadrant 3, C, quadrant 2, or D, quadrant 1? Okay. Third down. May nagsasabing letter A. May nagsasabing letter third quadrant daw. Okay. So far, the answers keep pouring in. And let's see, tama nga kaya ang B o baka ibang sagot. Saan quadrant kaya to? Now, tandaan po natin ha, that tangent theta is positive in both quadrant 1 and quadrant 3. Take note. Tangent is positive there because both X and Y have the same sign. Tangent is also defined in, in, the, in the Cartesian plane. Tangent is defined as Y over X. So Y divided by X is only positive if they have the same sign. Like in quadrant 1, wherein both X and Y are positive. Or in quadrant 3, wherein both X and Y are negative. 
Yung secant naman po is negative in quadrant 2 and quadrant 3. Bakit ganon? Secant is the reciprocal of cosine. And cosine is negative kung saan negative ang x value. Okay? That's why po, mga kaibigan. And since yung cosine naman, if cosine is negative, its reciprocal is secant. Negative din po yan. Kasi ang reciprocal ng negative ay still negative din. And secant is negative in Q2 and Q3 because X is negative in those quadrants. And you could see, ano pong common quadrant nila? That is Q3, right? Therefore, we could say that the common quadrant there is Q3 and hence theta the particularly the reference angle theta could be found there letter b very good good job po padayon lang but if not okay lang po yan laban lang po tayo mga ma'ams sirs 16 in a right triangle if cosine theta equals 12 over 13 what is the other acute angle in degrees of this triangle a, 67.38, B, 57.50, C, 32.50, or D, 22.62. Okay, I see letter A's. Let's see kung tama po. Now, from here, if you have cosine theta equals 12 over 13, to get the angle po, just apply the cosine inverse. Kung, kung cosine dito, cosine inverse. Kung tangent dito, tangent inverse. No? Or arc tan. So cosine inverse is also called arc cosine no? sa ating calculators. And by applying arc cosine po sa 12 over 13, the angle that you get is approximately 22.62 degrees. However, hindi po ito yung tanong. Nakasaad po kasi na yung hinahanap natin is what is the other acute angle. So yung hinahanap, and take note po ha, sa ating right triangle, the two acute angles are always complementary. Meaning the two acute angles add up to 90 degrees. Hence, the other angle is 90 minus 22.62, which is 67.38 degrees, so, tama nga naman po yung ating letter A. Alright. Yung kay Sir Jobert, yung ginawa niya, sinabtrack niya yung 90 at saka 22.62 sa from uh, 180. Ganun din naman po, no? Which is 67.38 degrees. Okay. 17. Suppose C is a right triangle of triangle ABC in the Euclidean plane. What is cotangent A times cotangent B? Is it A1, B0, C negative 1, or D cotangent AB? What's your guess? One daw ang sabi ni Teacher Marnie. Ganon din ang sabi ni Sir Sadie. Okay, one of my favorite movies po yan, no? yung si Sir Sadie. Ang munting prinsipe. Okay. Si Ma'am Jackie Lu, sabi niya, letter A din daw. Okay? Okay. Tama nga kaya. One nga ba? Hmm. Let's see. Ito po yung itsura ng triangle natin. Okay? So, sabi niya kasi sa problem, letter C uh, is a right angle. So, ito po yan. And take note po ha, in, tra in, in the traditional sense, if the angle is capital A, its opposite side is small letter A. Okay? That's why ito po. So, cap angle B, uh, side B. Small C, letter C is the side opposite of capital C. And with this, if you have cotangent, diba? the definition of cotangent po is adjacent divided by opposite. If you have cotangent A, Cotangent A is here. Adjacent niya is B. Yung opposite niya, A. So that's why cotangent A is B over A po dito. Samantalang, cotangent B, dito naman po, yung kanyang adjacent ay A. 
yung opposite niya ay B. Yan po. And with such, if you multiply cotangent A and cotangent B, that's B over A times A over B. No? By substitution po yan. And again, they are reciprocal. You are multiplying a number and it's reciprocal. And since none of them is equal to zero, it follows therefore that their product is equal to what? Letter A. So congratulations, Sir Sadi, Ma'am Teacher Marnie, and Ma'am Jackie Lou. Sana all. 18. If tangent theta minus cotangent theta equals zero, what will be the value of sine theta plus cosine theta? Is it A, square root of 2, B, 1, C, square root of 2 over 2, or D, 1 half? Ano po yung sagot natin? Okay, sabi ni Sir Say D, letter A daw. Ganun din yung sagot ni Ma'am Jackie Lou, ni Ma'am Gemma as well. Okay. Tama nga kaya? Okay, let's see po kung tama kayo. Now, from here, if tangent theta minus cotangent theta is zero, it follows no, na I, sub I added both sides by cotangent theta. So yung minus na to, magiging plus na lang sa right side. So tangent theta equals cotangent theta. And you could check po sa calculator ninyo that this is true if theta is equal to 45 degrees. Halimbawa lang po ito ha. If theta is 45 degrees. So therefore, by substitution, if you have sine theta plus cosine theta, so by substitution, or replace the theta by 45 degrees, and that's sine 45 plus cosine 45. Sine 45 po is square root of 2 over 2 plus square root of 2 over 2 then as the value of cosine 45. And that is square root of 2 lang po. Bakit? Kasi square root of 2 plus square root of 2 will become 2 square root of 2. Pero may divided by 2 pa. That's why yung 2 po sa numerator at saka sa denominator ay madidivide lang. Magiging 1 lang yan. Kaya ang tamang sagot ay square root of 2. Letter A. Congratulations. Okay, laban. 19. If cosine theta equals 3 fifths, what is or are the possible values of sine theta over 2? Is it A plus minus square root of 5 all over 5? B square root of 5 over 5? C plus minus square root of 3 over 5? Or D square root of 3 over 5? What is your guess or what is your answer? Okay, letter A naman daw. Sabi ni Ma'am Jackie Lou. Ganun din si Sir Sadie. Ni Ma'am Thea as well. Tama kaya? Now, tandaan po natin, meron po tayong half-angle identity, no? That sine theta over 2 is actually equal to plus minus the square root of the quantity 1 minus cosine theta all over 2. Bakit plus minus po? Because may tendency na mapupunta siya sa uh, quadrant na kung saan positive ang sign, pwede rin negative ang sign. And by substitution, with cosine theta equals 3 fifths, so yan po yung labas niya. So plus minus the square root of 1 minus 3 fifths all over 2. And using our calculators po, it's sine theta over 2 is equal to plus and minus the square root of 5 all over 5. Letter A. Siguro iba yung process ang iba sa atin. Wala pong kaso yun. No? Yung mahalaga, nakukuha po natin yung tamang sagot. 20. If secant theta is equal to 3 halves, which of the following could be the value of cosine 2 theta? Is it A, 1 ninth, B, 4 ninth, C, negative 1 ninth, or D, 4 over 21? Letter C daw, sabi ni Sir Sadie, ni Ma'am Jackie Luden. Ako, consistent. Wow, grabe. 
baka related ba kayong dalawa? <laughs> o ito, sabi ni Sir Ronel, letter C daw. Sabi ni ma'am ni Teacher Marnie, ganun din. Okay. Discuss natin. Mula rito, um, take note po that if secant theta is 3 halves, it follows therefore that cosine theta is 2 thirds. Sir, bakit? Tandaan po natin that secant and cosine are actually reciprocals of one another po. That's why it follows that cosine theta is two-thirds. Now, meron po tayong formula for the double angle of cosine, no? That is, cosine 2 theta is equal to 2 cosine squared theta minus 1. In fact, meron pang dalawang formula na pwedeng gamitin dito. Pwede mo rin gamitin si cosine squared theta minus sine squared theta. Meron ding isang formula, 1 minus 2 cosine squared theta. Sorry, to 1 minus 2 sine squared theta po pala. So in this case, however, among the 3, ito po yung ginamit ko kasi alam po po yung value ng cosine theta. Pero kung alam mo yung sine value ng sine theta, gamitin nyo po ang 1 minus 2 sine squared theta po. So from here, Cosine squared theta means you will square two-thirds here, which is your cosine theta. So that's two times the square of two-thirds minus one. Uh, two-thirds squared is four-ninths. And using or doing the algebra tells you that cosine theta, cosine two theta is negative one-ninth. And if you answered C, C, you got it right. Yes, I agree po, Sir Sadie, no? Pwede rin po yung one minus two sines squared po, sine squared x. Basta given po yung value ng sine theta po natin. Okay. Good job. 21. If cosine theta, if cosine 2 theta, I mean, is 2 thirds, what is sine squared theta? Is it 1 third, 1 fourth, 1 fifth, or 1 sixth? Let's see. Let's wait po sa mga sagot ng ating madlang people. I could see letter D from Ma'am Jackie Lou. What do the others think? Try ko po tayo mostly no, for today. Letter D din daw, sabi ni Sir Sadie, ni Ma'am Aliza as well. Okay, discuss po natin. Take note po natin, meron po tayong formula that sine squared theta sine squared theta is equal to 1 minus cosine 2 theta all over 2. This is actually derived from the cosine 2 theta equals 1 minus 2 sine squared theta po na na, na present din po dito ni Sir Sadie sa ating chat. No? So just deriving the formula po, ito po yung kanyang kinalabasan. So that's why by substitution, that cosine 2 theta is 2 thirds. So sine squared theta is equal to 1 minus 2 thirds all over 2. 1 minus 2 thirds simplifies to 1 third and 1 third divided by 2 is just 1 six. So if you answered 1 six, ikaw na, the best ka, letter G. But if not, learning experience po sa ating lahat. So don't worry po. Okay, good job. All right. I hope na nakuha po natin ha. So take note po, kinuha ko po yung formula na to mula sa double angle identity ng cosine 2 theta which is cosine 2 theta equals 1 minus 2 sine squared theta. Thank you po. Next, consider the figure as shown. Which of the following formulas is best to use to solve for sine C? Take note po ha. Ito po, tingnan nyo pong ma maigi. Will it be good to use law of cosines, law of sines, the Pythagorean theorem, or the Heron's formula? Okay. So far, all the people who commented answered letter A, law of cosines. Ganun din. Okay. So far, we have six people no, who commented, and all of you answered letter A. 
which is law of cosines. And law of cosines is dan -tara dan 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 dan. You are actually correct. Bakit? Because there are only you, there are two instances where law of cosines can be used. The first one when you have what we call SAS, side, angle, side. If you are given two sides and an included angle, you can use law of cosines. Or SSS, meaning the three sides are given. You can use the law of cosines to determine the some values of the angles. So, so you could see for dito, side, angle, side. This is SAS format. That's why law of cosines is applicable. Kung hindi po given yung SAS or SSS, then probably you could use the law of sines to determine some other angles or uh, segments. Okay. Thank you. 23. What is the area in square units of a circular sector whose central angle measures 60 degrees and the radius is 9? Is it A, 25 pi over 6, B, 27 pi over 6, C, 27 pi over 14, or D, 27 pi over 5? Area of a sector. Letter E daw. Grabe. Mag-asawa ko dalawang to. Sabay eh. Char lang. Okay, biro lang po. Okay, iba po yung sabi. May, may sinagest na answer si Sir Sadie. 27 pi over 2 daw. Letter E din, yung sagot ng madlang people. Nako, tignan po natin. So, ito po yung formula no, ng area ng isang sector, ng circle. That's A is equal to theta all over 360 degrees times pi r squared. No? Where theta here is the measure of a central angle in degrees, of course. And r is the length of the radius of your circle. By substitution po, that's A is equal to area equals 60 degrees over 360 degrees times pi times 9 squared. The 60 over 360 simplifies to 1 sixth. 9 squared is 81 times pi. That's 81 pi. But you could see you know, that 81 over 6, that 81 and 6 have a GCF of 3. And dividing each by 3 and simplifying everything gives us 81 uh, I mean, 27 pi all over 2 square units. And again, it's not found among the choices. So it has to be letter E. All right. And let's have 24 po. An ant is 100 meters away from the base of the building. If the angle of elevation of the ant to the building of the tree uh, it's 18 degrees. Ah, sabit lang po ha, para may mali sa pag-state ko. Sabit po. If the angle of elevation of the ant to the top of the tree is 18 degrees, how tall in meters is the building? Neglect the height of the ant. A, 2977 B, 30.54, C, 32.49, or D, 33.10? What do you think? Okay, letter C daw. Okay, it seems na parang unanimous tayo, which is 32.49. We'll discuss. From here, ito po yung itsura niya. No? So ito, ito po yung an. Yung, ito po yung height ng building. Yung building, ito yung H, yung height niya. He is 100 meters away from there. And this is the angle of elevation niya. No? Of course, the angle of elevation, it's the angle with respect to the horizontal and this one. And from here, with respect to 18 degrees, di ba ito yung angle mo, yung theta? Of course, presume na po na 90 degrees ito. Kasi uh, it's, uh, we have an assumption here that the floor and the height... Of the, and the building uh, are perpendicular. No? So with respect to 18 degrees, ano si H? Siya yung opposite side. Ano si 100? 
Shayong, adjacent. So what function po yan? What trigonometric function po yung gagamitin natin? That links opposite and adjacent? And that is tangent. Thank you po, Ma'am Jackie Lu, Sir Sadie, Ma'am uh, Teacher Norbian, Teacher Marnie. So we will use tangent po. Tangent 18 degrees equals opposite na H over adjacent na 100. And since we're after the H, we'll just multiply both sides na lang po by 100 to clear of fractions. So 100 is equal to tangent 18 degrees. And with that, using our calculators, no? It's approximately 32.49 meters. Letter C. And that concludes po the 24 items. We still have some extra math. Try nyo po ito. Express 4 raised to 127 times 25 raised to 125 in scientific notation. Okay, so I'll pause the video po for a few moments. Try solving this one first. And I'll be waiting for your answers. Okay, sabi ni sir ng isa sa inyo, no? 1 times 10 raised to 254 daw. Okay. May sumagot ng 4 times 10 raised to 254. Okay, let's see. Ito po yung ginawa ko. Take note po ha, in writing a number in scientific notation, no? Dapat yung first number is a number starting from 1, pero hindi siya dapat lalagpas ng, ng 10. 10, it's times 10 raised to something. So ito po yung ginawa ko. Yung ginawa ko po is, ginawa ko pong lahat. Pero bakit ganun? Sinabon ko naman, ayaw ko minis. Joke lang. So ito po. Yung ginawa ko po is, notice ko po no, yung mas maliit na exponent, Magkalapit naman po yung exponents nila eh. Pero, uh, mas maliit po yung exponent na 125. So yung 4 raised to 127, tapo tumawa si Mamarni. Ay ginawa ko pong, ang 4 raised to 127, ay brinake ko siya. In, I have written it as 4 squared times 4 raised to 125. And, kinopya ko lang po ito. Then what's next? I also knew, no, na kung titignan po natin, di ba 4, uh, this 4 here, I express it as 2 squared. Then this 25 po, I express it as 5 squared. Then the rest po, I kinopya ko lang. And with that, di ba meron po tayo, notice po, a power raised 2 squared raised to 125, di ba? So if that's the case, we are just, we are just going to copy the common base, the base, and multiply their exponents po. So this one, yung 4 squared, ginawa ko ng 16. Yung 2 squared naman po, raised to 125 becomes 2 raised to 2 times 125, which is 250 times. Yung 5 naman po, using a similar approach, so 5 squared raised to 125, 2 times 125 will be 250, so it's 5 raised to 250. And kung inyo pong mapapansin, Yung 2 raised, raised to 250 times 5 times raised to 250 as well. Parehas po silang exponent to 250. So I can mo just multiply their base and copy the common exponent. No, That's why 2 times 5, 10, and it's raised to 250. So it's 16 times 10 raised to 250. However, mga kaibigan, in scientific notation, it's important that the first number is from 1 but less than 10. So dito, nag-divide po ako ng 10. So magiging 1.6 ito. Pero pag divide ko ng 10, to maintain equality, times 10 ako dito. So 10 time, raised to 250 times 10 ay magiging 10 raised to 251 po. Kaya ang final answer is 1.6 times 10 raised to 251. I hope na clear po sa ating lahat. Okay. One more? 
A point P is outside the circle. Geometry po tayo. A point P is outside the circle and on the same plane as it. If the points on the circle closest and farthest from P are 9 and 16 units away, respectively, how long is the tangent segment from P to the circle? I will pause the video po muna from time to time, no? Please try to draw the figure and how it looks like. Then try using theorems associated with it. So I'll pause po muna the recording ha, and give you time. Okay. Okay, so so far, um, let's see kung paano nga ba ito gawin. So ito po yung itsura ng figure na yan, no? So ito po si P. <laughs> Grabe ka naman, ma'am. Waga, sakit nun na Gusto mo nang bumitaw. Nako, tumigil kayo. So ito po yung figure na yan. Halimbawa, let's call this I, let's call this J. Sabi sa figure, ang shortest distance niya from P to this is 9. And the longest distance niya po sa point on the circle no dito is 16. And let's call this the tangent, no the LP. Okay? And in this case, you see, no we have here a tangent. And we have here a secant. And we can have, we can solve this using what we call the tangent secant theorem. And what does the tangent secant theorem tell us? That is, if a tangent segment and a secant segment are drawn to a circle from an exterior point, then the square of the measure of the tangent, so yung square nito, lang length nito, is equal to the product of the measures of the secant segment, yung kabuong secant, and its external secant segment. In other words, uh, this is LP po, LP squared. So we have LP squared, yung length nito, equals the length ng external segment IP times the whole segment na JP. With that, uh, so LP squared is this one IP, you know, it's 9 external segment times the total length ng segment, which is uh, 16 plus 9 po yan. Okay, so that's LP squared is equal to 9 times the 9 plus 16. The 9 plus 16 represents the total length of JP. So 9 plus 16 is 25. So the square of LP is equal to 9 times 25 po. However, we will take only the principal square root both sides kasi wala naman po tayong length na negative dito. So I'll just take the square root of both sides, no? The principal square root. But the square root of 9 is 3. The square root of 25 po is 5. And so the length of LP is 3 times 5, which is 15 units. So I hope na nakuha po natin ang 15 units. And if you did, congratulations! Kung hindi naman po, okay lang, no? Kung hindi ngayon ang panahon na para sa iyo, wag pong maiinip dahil ganyan po talaga ang buhay sa mundo. Yung mahalaga po ay natututo po tayo and hopefully this will enable us to prepare, no? To prepare us for the best to come, especially for the upcoming licensure examinations for teachers. With that, thank you very much. And a great day to one and all.